The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me for today's webinar, uh, Marketplaces Masterclass, Your Strategy for Seller Success. Uh, before I get started today, maybe a little bit of um, housekeeping. I first want to make sure that you can all hear me. So if you can hear me, can you just put up your hand? There's a little hands up icon that you can click on just in front of you, and that'll let me know that you can hear me okay. This is a, a one-to-many live um, webinar, so although I can't hear, um, you hopefully you'll be able to hear me and during the webinar uh, you're welcome to ask any questions um, that you might have so there's a little question console uh, in front of you uh, and you can ask questions through that question console and I'll do my best to answer those questions at the end um, of the webinar it's going to be quite hard for me to answer them as we go so I'll leave uh, questions until the end so we will leave a few minutes at the end for Q um, and A. Um, so first of all Obviously, thank you uh, for joining me. Uh, my name's Ryan, and I'm the founder and current CEO of uh, NITO. Um, NITO is a retail management platform, and I'll talk a little bit about how NITO can help you be a successful marketplace uh, seller uh, later on uh, in this webinar. Before I was involved in NITO, however, I was a, a multi-channel retailer uh, myself. I ran an online uh, department store that sold uh, both through eBay uh, and through my own web store and have owned and run a number of other multi-channel retail uh, businesses since as well. Um, okay, so just jumping straight in, the agenda for today's um, webinar. So first of all, we're gonna have a look at um, the current state of marketplaces and a report that we uh, recently uh, released. We'll talk a bit about why you should be selling on marketplaces, which marketplaces you should be selling on, especially here in Australia, uh, which products to sell on marketplaces and how to find a niche, um, how to structure your marketplace listings, some ideas on how you can price your products, how you can improve your seller ratings, how you can win the Amazon buy box and a little bit about what it takes to win the Amazon buy box. Uh, and then we'll just talk generally about you know what it takes to be a successful omni-channel retailer. At the end of the webinar, we'll also uh, be sending out an exclusive offer to all webinar attendees in conjunction with one of our marketplace partners, uh, eBay. Okay, so like I said, the current state of marketplaces here in Australia. First of all, um, for all of you that are very new to online retail, um, I guess I'll define exactly what a, a marketplace is. So ultimately a marketplace is a central platform or website where third parties can sell goods direct to consumers. And not too long ago, there were only one or two, you know, powerful marketplaces here in Australia, specifically eBay. But what we've seen in, in recent times is the introduction of Amazon, the catch the day marketplace uh, and others. And we'll talk about the difference between these uh, marketplaces uh, a little bit um, later. So what is the current state of marketplaces here in Australia? So there's been a lot of things going on in the, the world of marketplace. Australia Post uh, recently released their annual Inside Australian Shopping Report, which looks at consumer behavior and trends based on analysis of goods bought online and delivered by Australia Post. And the standout findings really from this report was that marketplaces in Australia grew a whopping 74.8% year on year between last year and, and this year, which is incredible uh, growth considering that, you know, uh, eBay as a marketplace has been in this market for well over a decade now to have that kind of growth um, is, is pretty incredible. And with this growth, like I said before, we're seeing more and more entrance to the marketplace arena. So Myers launched their own marketplace, Catch of the Day uh, launched a marketplace. Um, you've got the Facebook uh, marketplace as well. And of course, you know, Amazon entered into the market towards the end of last year. The report also found that online goods spend increased by 18.7% uh, over the year compared to just 2.5% for traditional retailer, which is obviously really good news for anyone selling online. Like I said, Amazon launched towards the end of la last year and um, Amazon Prime has launched more recently uh, than that. So it's been a big eight months for Amazon here in Australia. They've officially opened up uh, their doors with their Australian site in November. Um, and even though many referred to it as a false start, it was actually the smoothest and quickest launch in all of their history, allowing them to really test uh, their waters and their technology uh, in this uh, market. Um, like uh, many of you would know, um, there was some recent 
GST law changes here in Australia, um, which has seen an even greater drive in traffic to the Amazon Australia site. So Amazon US is now forcing uh, Australian consumers to buy on the Amazon Australian marketplace, which is uh, seeing a spike in Amazon Australia marketplace sales. At least that's what we're seeing throughout our base. And uh, very recently, uh, they in introduced uh, fulfillment by Amazon. Um, so fulfillment by Amazon um, is a service that you as a retailer can take advantage of. It allows you to warehouse your products in Amazon's warehouses and Amazon therefore fulfill uh, orders on your behalf uh, for your customers. Uh, so this negates the need for you to have your own warehouse. Um, you ultimately are leveraging Amazon's warehouse uh, space and their fulfillment technology and shipping providers. I mean, you can just focus heavily on sourcing uh, the right product at the right um, price. While this is all going on with Amazon, um, we're also seeing a lot of changes happening uh, with eBay, a significant amount of changes, in fact. So we have the eBay Plus program, uh, their own you know, membership subscription program to compete with Amazon Prime. It's um, slightly cheaper uh, than Amazon Prime. Um, they're also offering um, delivery guarantees now to consumers and a number of other innovative um, ideas that are actually quite different to eBay's traditional business uh, model uh, here in Australia. So Australia are really leading the charge in terms of innovation uh, in the marketplace uh, of eBay. Um, and we're seeing eBay continue to grow from strength um, to strength within our con consumer and merchant um, base, which is really exciting because eBay as a marketplace is one that really does partner with retailers rather than try to compete with um, retailers. They've also, and you probably have seen them yourselves, really ramped up uh, their advertising uh, efforts here in Australia. So in mainstream media, we're seeing more and more advertising uh, by the likes of, of eBay in competition to, to that of Amazon's. And um, we're also seeing um, a trend towards more cross-border trade, especially between Australia and Asia. So Chinese e-commerce giant JD.com launched in Australia over the last year. And Australian sellers are increasingly selling more and more products uh, through the Alibaba uh, marketplace and Tmall, um, which is China's largest third-party platform for brands and retailers. I um, mean, Australia, in fact, is now ranked the third highest selling uh, country into um, China. So while there's still some uncertainty around marketplaces, we here at Nido wholeheartedly believe um, that marketplaces is um, very much the way of the future and the sentiment is really shared amongst um, our merchants. In fact, last year we conducted a survey the day before Amazon launched in the country um, to sort of get a temperature check on the sentiment towards Amazon and other marketplaces. And of um, the few hundred Nito merchants who responded to that survey, 95% of them said that they actually intended to sell on Amazon in 2018. Um, and that figure was just as high for, for eBay and other marketplaces um, also starting to come through. And we're actually seeing that follow through now in the number of our merchants that are adopting uh, the Amazon marketplace, um, the eBay marketplace and other marketplaces and getting significant uh, traction um, through them. In fact, uh, some of our merchants are transacting more than $50 million uh, a year uh, through marketplaces. So it's um, you know, definitely um, a considerable sales channel for our customers. So why, why sell on uh, marketplaces? So there's a number of, of key reasons and probably the biggest is reach and exposure, exposure rather to, to new customers. So the great thing about marketplaces, you can leverage the reputation of a marketplace who already got a trusted uh, brand and have household names selling through it for your own you know, small uh, business. Um, so for a very small fee, you can list your products and be alongside um, many of the biggest retailers uh, in the country uh, competing directly uh, with them. Um, like I said um, before, we're obviously also seeing a significant amount of traffic going to these uh, marketplaces. So your ability to, to take advantage of that traffic for a relatively uh, low cost and a cost that you understand before you list your products is uh, definitely of benefit. We're also seeing this trend um, 
from a consumer side to be more loyal to a single platform. And this is driven by the likes of Amazon Prime, eBay Plus, um, Catch the Day have also got their own membership program, the Catch Club. And so consumers are really starting uh, their search for products on the marketplace or website that they have got a loyalty to. Um, and this is uh, really evident, I guess, in the States where um, Amazon is is really now the preferred place to start a product search. So back in the day, it used to be Google where people would search for products. And now people are starting uh, their product searches on Amazon. In fact, 56% of product searches um, now begin on Amazon in America, which is up um, from 15% in 2000 and 12. Um, so I think in another really important reason uh, for you as a merchant to have your products wherever customers are starting their, their purchasing journey. Like I said, also you're getting access to a multi-million dollar marketing budget. So the likes of Amazon and eBay are spending a tremendous amount of money at the moment to acquire customers and to build that loyal customer base. And you as a merchant uh, get the advantage of that for a relatively low uh, cost that you can really understand before you even sell something enabling you to price your products appropriately. Um, another thing that I think is really important is that you know marketplaces are really technology company so amazon is, is really a technology and a data company and and so is ebay um, and for a small business to compete with that technology in evolving uh, and new sales channels like voice commerce it's becoming in increasingly difficult uh, so it's important that you as a retailer are surfacing your inventory in these new sales channels so for example amazon alexa can be seen as a sales channel so voice commerce now for you to have your products available through amazon alexa in theory you have to have those products listed um, on the amazon marketplace and it's incredibly important nowadays that your products are readily available wherever consumers are and in the future no doubt there'll be more uh, sales channels um, that consumers will be purchasing through and it's you know incredibly important that you as a retailer are able to surface your inventory through these channels and by being on marketplaces you get the advantage of being able to do that again at a relatively low cost and probably more important than anything is you know shoppers really uh, do prefer marketplaces. Um, and we did a survey last year with um, Telstra. We surveyed 1,001 active online shoppers here in Australia just before Amazon uh, launched. And we already found that you know marketplaces are shoppers' first preference for buying online in this country in front of company websites and social media. And when you look at the, the traffic to, uh, to websites in Australia, um, that's indicative of, of this. So which um, marketplaces should you be focusing on um, at the moment. So we recently developed a report where we compared 16 of the top marketplaces in Australia and globally on the basis of reach, cost, and a number of other metrics, and including Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, Tmall, Etsy, TradeMe, and, and many others. But for the sake of time, I'm going to focus on the ones that we here at Nito and our merchants are having a success um, through. Uh, we will be also sharing this um, report with all webinar attendees um, if you are interested in more detail. Um, so firstly, um, Amazon. So Amazon is obviously um, the largest marketplace in the world. Um, they're the third largest company in the world behind only Apple and Google and probably will be you know, the next uh, trillion dollar company. Um, they have over 310 active, uh, million active monthly customers and currently are receiving around 45 million monthly visits here in Australia and we're seeing that steadily uh, grow with the various initiatives that they have to drive traffic to the Australian marketplace. Um, so Amazon um, has local marketplaces in 10 countries um, and you need to register to sell in each of those marketplaces independently and you're charged a seller fee uh, for selling in each of those marketplaces independently of each other. So for example, if you, you want to sell on Amazon US, you, you'd set up an Amazon Seller Central account in, in the US and the same uh, for Australia. And there are um, some differences between each marketplace, including the category uh, tree, um, the available categories to sell through, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an important, I guess, difference between Amazon and eBay, where with eBay, um, you actually create a single account and you can then list to you know, multiple eBay marketplaces. 
Um, so eBay, I guess, is the number one most visited retail site in Australia and has been for some time now. It's the fifth most visited website in the country as well, ahead of Wikipedia and news.com.au. They have around 12 million monthly visitors, which is approximately you know, three times that of what Amazon Australia is currently receiving. Um, there's 40,000 Australian retailers um, selling on eBay um, Australia, or at least there's 40,000 uh, eBay Australia stores. Um, and 80 of the top 100 retailers in, in Australia are actually selling on eBay. Um, and that's something I think that a lot of people don't uh, quite understand just yet. I think a lot of people still perceive Mark marketplaces and specifically eBay um, as being a place to buy secondhand goods that's you know ultimately where eBay came from uh, but it's very much changed in recent times to now be a place where you know 90% of the items that are sold are brand new and are delivered by reputable uh, retailers so no longer is it seen as a secondhand marketplace they have sort of offloaded that secondhand goods market to the likes of Gumtree which is also owned uh, by eBay um, like uh, Amazon, like I said before, eBay have got more than the one site, so they've actually got local sites in 30 countries. But the big difference uh, with eBay is that you have a single account that you can sell through all these sites uh, with. Um, and I think probably bigger than any difference between Amazon and eBay is eBay is really about partnering with retailers um, to grow uh, them both on and off eBay and grow their brand um, leveraging the eBay platform. So with eBay you've got a lot more control over your brand and your product listings than you might have with say Amazon who ultimately is is a hybrid of a marketplace um, and an online retailer themselves. So Amazon are you know shipping goods that they they purchase and in inventory themselves um, and then they're also acting as a marketplace where third-party sellers can list their inventory with their goal to offer for Earth's you know, largest um, selection. So yeah, eBay is still Australia's most fav favorite marketplace. We're definitely seeing that through the Nido platform. There's a significantly uh, greater number of transactions going through the eBay marketplace than Amazon uh, for us at the moment, but we are seeing Amazon steadily growing and no doubt in time, and it might be a long time, you know, Amazon uh, will be up there competing with eBay in this country. And therefore it's really important that you as a retailer um, you know, get in early and take advantage of having first mover advantage on Amazon because they are big benefits, um, which I'll talk to you later about in terms of your history on Amazon. Uh, the next marketplace um, that we believe you should be focusing on at the moment is the, the Catch of the Day marketplace. Um, so Catch of the Day was originally Australia's largest daily deal site. Um, so they would offer a, a small range of products at ridiculous prices. Um, it then evolved into a large online department store with a large distribution facility that's in fact all robotic down in, in Melbourne. And now it's evolved into a hybrid um, marketplace slash online retail operation, much like Amazon. Again, like Amazon, they have their, their own loyalty program, the Catch um, Club, and they're seeing more and more retailers sell through the platform as well. So we have some uh, retailers selling through, through Catch now. They're doing exceptionally uh, well and it's in, in, in those cases, even their preferred sales channel. So if you haven't looked at Catch as a marketplace opportunity for your business, it's definitely one uh, to consider. So in answer to the question, you know, which marketplace, um, the answer is really, you know, go where your customers are. So a recent Roy Morgan report found that nearly 14 million Australians aged 14 plus visit online marketplaces in an average four weeks. And of those marketplaces, eBay is by far um, the the leading marketplace with almost you know triple the visits of, of Amazon. But with all of Amazon's momentum and advertising, like I said, they are likely to catch up um, over time. Um, we've seen that historically in other countries that they've entered into, so Canada and others. Um, it does take them a little bit of a while to get traction, set up their distribution network. They recently launched a new warehouse in Sydney, and they'll just continue um, and continue to see them grow. So again, important to, to get on early. So now let's move to, I guess, the second part of the webinar. We've covered why marketplaces and which marketplaces um, you should be focusing on at the moment. Um, now let's look at how you can really succeed on these um, various marketplaces. So first of all, 
really important to choose the right products to sell uh, through the various marketplaces that you might sell through and you know, some products might be not might not be suited for certain marketplaces they might not even be accepted by those marketplaces so as an example Amazon haven't yet opened up all of the available categories that they have in other countries here in Australia so it's important I guess first to understand what products you can sell through the marketplaces that you're wanting uh, to sell through. We definitely find that businesses that have unique products or their own brand of products, so importers and distribution uh, distributors or people that have a very niche offering, do exceptionally well on marketplaces. So it's really important to research and find a niche uh, that sets you apart from your competition and to continue to, continue to test new products and new ideas on marketplaces. At the end of the day, you typically only pay a marketplace on the sale of an item outside of your, your small listing and maybe monthly subscription fee. So it's a really great testing ground um, for new products. Um, and so it is a great way to research and test what sells. Um, there are really great tools out there that you can use to do this as well, to find niches in the market. One in particular uh, is called TerraPeak. Um, so TerraPeak allows you to research what other sellers are selling on marketplaces and through some artificial intelligence can even recommend opportunities uh, for you and your products on uh, the likes of eBay. This is a really good idea to, to understand you know, how much you should be charging uh, for your products in relation to competitors, the volume that you, you will expect to sell before investing uh, in purchasing or importing inventory. The next thing to really focus on is the title of your product um, on marketplaces. This is relevant for, for most marketplaces as it has heavy weighting in a marketplace's search algorithm. So Amazon has really strict guidelines on formatting the title of your product depending on the category that you sell on um, and we'll include a link um, in the show notes uh, to these guidelines but the general format you can follow for Amazon and it's probably a good format to follow through to the likes of eBay and other marketplaces is the brand name first then the the model of the product and then uh, the product's um, uh, text so an example would be here we've got uh, the brand you know, safety first, the model is Visto and the product type or text is four wheel stroller. Um, and then a lot of sellers will append additional information to the end of the title to help describe uh, the product um, and sell uh, the product. It might also include keywords that um, people might be searching. Uh, so relevant keywords, maybe reversible seat, newborn, the color of the product, um, et cetera. Really important, however, to not keyword stuff uh, your titles, so make sure that they're still human uh, readable. Um, and if you're selling on marketplaces like Amazon, in fact, you can you can embed your keywords rather in hidden search uh, fields. Um, but our experience shows that human readable, uh, relevant product titles are best and will help with your, your search uh, rankings on marketplaces. Number three is to really use and take advantage of the bullet points fields on Amazon and then the attributes fields on the likes of eBay and other marketplaces. Um, so for Amazon, um, you can see here, um, here's the format they suggest for what to include in each of the five bullet points that you have access to. Um, so the first thing is a general product description. Uh, the next is materials and construction of the product. Uh, the next is details on the most important features, so two bullet points worth of details typically, and then finally the dimensions of uh, the product. So in this example here um, of bullet points for a hairdryer, the bullet points describe both the key technical specifications of the hairdryer, um, you know, the wattage, the heat and the speed settings and attachments, as well as the benefits uh, of these features. So for example, the ceramic coated grill produces infrared heat. Um, so this is really important. It's not only important, um, I guess, in terms of a consumer uh, finding the information out that they need to make a purchase decision quickly. It's also really important uh, in terms of your search ranking. So bullet points are reported to be weighted uh, heavily uh, in Amazon's search uh, ranking. Um, and then with attributes, so you know things like color or, or size or, or material, it's really important to have these uh, specifics defined on your products and then fed through to marketplaces like eBay, Amazon, and Catch. Um, again, by feeding through specifics, um, you will improve your search ranking on marketplaces. Um, you will also then be included in filters on, on search marketplace 
uh, on marketplace listing pages. So for example, if someone's searching for a product and then wants to uh, refine their search using filters of color or size, your products will actually appear for those filters when they use filters. Uh, so a faceted type search model. And um, that's really important to take advantage of. So when, I guess, building out your database of products, make sure that in whichever platform you use, you have got those specifics defined in text fields that you can pass through to your marketplaces of choice rather than just being uh, populated into your product description and amongst all your other text. Ultimately, if you can have those specifics individually listed out, uh, you will be able to feed them through to the, your marketplaces of choice and improve your, your search rankings and uh, conversion rates. And number four is really to optimize um, the formatting of your description, which can lead to a greater um, conversion rate. So use headers and bullet point lists and where possible, keep your description to plain text. So what we see from a, a lot of immature sellers or people just starting out uh, is they like to stuff their description with images, um, you know, bright colors, interesting fonts. Um, and ultimately, when you're selling on a marketplace like Amazon, they only accept a text description. Um, and so you have to then go redo your description for that marketplace. So to ensure that your description can be uh, leveraged across all of your sales channels, keep it um, as simple as possible in plain text and rather let the, the design of your website or the design of your eBay listing template um, control the look and feel of the description rather than the actual body of the description itself. So the biggest tip I can I, I can give you in terms of setting up your descriptions is keep them plain text. If necessary, use bullet points. Um, and other than that, uh, just keep it, keep it really simple. It's the content of your description that matters, uh, not how it looks and, and feels really. Um, number five is, you know, take advantage of marketplace SEO. I've already mentioned keywords. Um, so keywords are just as important on marketplaces as they are on the likes of Google, especially for Amazon. So choose the most accurate and precise keywords in your listing titles and your subtitles and your bullet points. Um, include variations of keywords. So if you're selling maybe shoes, uh, use trainers, sneakers, kicks, as well as the the word shoes you never know what someone's going to be searching on and like i said in amazon you can you can, can stick these keywords into their hidden keywords field but it is important not to keyword stuff so if you're seen to be just sticking random keywords into your product titles or into your hidden search keyword field uh to drive traffic to your listings your listing can be penalized and in fact removed from the marketplace so i guess the most important point is you know, use uh, variations, but make sure those variations are relevant uh, to the specific uh, products. Next is really invest in your, your imagery. So professional images sell more products. It's a fact. Um, you need to invest in professional uh, photography, um, or if you have the ability uh, to do the photography yourself, um, make sure you invest in high quality lighting and editing um, equipment. It's not as simple as just using uh, images from your existing website or from your supplier's website. Some marketplaces have very strict um, requirements uh, for, for images. So for example, on Amazon, 80%, 85% rather of, of the photo must be uh, occupied by the product itself. You can't have watermarks on the images. Um, you must have a white background, there must be no text on the images. So these are all rules that uh, they enforce. eBay are starting to do the same. And when you try to upload an image to these marketplaces that doesn't meet their strict requirements, the listing will simply be uh, rejected or even worse, it'll you know, be listed and then a few days later uh, be taken down and you know, you'll lose the benefit of that, that, that few days that you had it listed for. So it's really important to invest in high quality images. A great um, tool that we recommend is uh, Pixie, so P-I-X-C. Uh, you can just take some, you know, photos of your products um, with your iPhone or, or with a high quality digital camera. You can then upload them to Pixie and then they will edit them and deliver back to you professionally edited product photos at a very, very low cost. So I would say don't invest too much time in editing your own product images. Use a service like uh, Pixie um, and focus your energy on rather growing um, your business.
but yeah, key takeaways are use as many images as uh, you can. So eBay allows you to have 12 free photos per product, Amazon 9 to take advantage of those uh, product uh, photo uh, opportunities um, and ensure that you have very high quality images, um, at least, you know, um, typically 600 plus pixels on either side um, to ensure um, that customers get a really good view of your product because it does lead to much better conversion rates. Um, where possible, I think the next key uh, tip is to really take advantage of the fact that you can emphasize and grow your brand through some of these marketplaces, specifically eBay, in fact. So eBay are all about partnering with retailers and you know, enabling them you know, to grow their business and brand through the marketplace. So with eBay, you can uh, purchase an eBay store um, there's different versions of eBay store subscriptions that give you different levels of flexibility um, and control. But ultimately, with eBay, you do have the opportunity to, to brand your store to look exactly like your own website, for example, your own offline branding, um, and also to brand your individual listings, so the description component of your, your listings. Um, and this is a really great way uh, to grow your brand in front of millions and millions of, of monthly users. So this example here um, is a Nido customer, Lucky Pet. Um, they've got an eBay featured store, um, and it's customized to look very much like their own website, so that the, the experience that a customer has, whether it be on the, the Lucky Pet website, in-store on eBay, is very much the same. Okay, a little bit on, on pricing and pricing your, your products for marketplaces. So I guess the first um, the first and most important point is to really understand your, your pricing or, or more importantly, your cost price. So know exactly how much each of your products is actually costing you. So that's more than just you know what the uh, supplier is charging you. You really need to take into account things like shipping, packaging, labor, overhead, etc. to store that product uh, to understand its true uh, cost. So once you've got that true cost, you can then you know, work out exactly what you're gonna sell that uh, product um, for. And there's great tools, like I mentioned before, Terra Peak is a really good tool if you're looking to do competitive uh, pricing where you're going to price your products based on a lower and upper limit um, and what your competitors are charging. Um, so this will tell you what they're charging, what they're getting success uh, through and from that you can determine how much um, you want to charge uh, yourself. Um, there's other tools also that I'm going to talk about in a second that can really help to automate that process. So if you've got thousands and thousands of products and many competitors who are constantly changing pricing and you, you want to um, you know, stay competitive, there are tools that can automate that for you, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, the next point that's really important is to ensure that you have consistency across all of your, your sales channels. So uh, we, we see a lot of retailers make the mistake of charging a different price uh, through their different sales channels. So on their website, they will charge one price. On a marketplace, they'll charge another price. And in store, they'll charge again a different price. And ultimately, what that leads to is maybe a short-term win, but in the long term, a really poor customer experience. And nowadays, um, the cost of acquiring a customer is so high, it's critically important that you keep them long term. Um, and so it's really important that you provide a consistent customer experience across all your sales channels and platforms like Nido can enable you to do that very simply and easily. I mean, it is a very important um, point to take um, seriously. Uh, a survey last year that we did found that you know 75% of consumers expect pricing to be the same across you know all sales channels. And it doesn't really have to be a race to the bottom with marketplaces either. So some people have the perception uh, that if you sell on marketplaces, you need to sell it for really, really cheap. And that's simply uh, not true. In fact, one of our Nido customers is the highest seller for uh, their product on Amazon, outselling the second best seller of that same product, 20 to 1, yet their price point is actually higher uh, than their nearest competitor. So it's not all about price. Um, it's about uh, customer experience, it's about speed of delivery, um, it's about your ranking on a search engine and, and the marketplace, um, it's about the quality of your listing, your warranty, and ultimately uh, your customer experience. Okay, so I mentioned a tool uh, just before um, for dynamic repricing or for automating your pricing. Um, so that you don't have to manually be updating your pricing when competitors change their pricing. Um, and one in particular 
um, that we recommend is a tool called Street Pricer. So what Street Pricer will do, like other automated pricing tools, is that it'll look at the pricing uh, of your products against your competitors on the various marketplaces. Um, you will then set a, a minimum and maximum price that you want to charge for your pr product or, or a threshold based on your cost price um, and it will automatically reprice your products based on what competitors are charging for that same uh, product on the various marketplaces that you, you sell through, completely automating uh, your pricing uh, strategy. So these tools are really great, especially if you have a very large range of products and if you're selling uh, products that are highly competitive in the market. Um, so have a look at Street Pricer. They've got a, a website, Cardi and the team there are, are great um, to deal with. Okay, the next thing that we'll talk about is seller ratings. Um, really important on all marketplaces, um, especially Amazon and eBay. Um, so first of all, how to get a good seller rating. First and most important is consistently providing excellent service. Um, so making sure that you you get back to customers uh, quickly when they ask a question, making sure that you ship products uh, in a timely uh, manner, making sure that your product descriptions are useful and accurate um, and provide the full uh, story, making sure that you have really good warranties on your products. These are all things that ultimately lead to a great customer experience um, and service and will ultimately lead to higher ratings from customers. It's really important um, that you don't go out and proactively ask your customers uh, for reviews, especially if they're Amazon customers, it's actually against Amazon's uh, policy. Um, so even you know slipping a piece of paper in your package is, is non-compliant. Um, the more reviews your listing receives, the more easily Amazon will be able to categorize your listings. Um, and this is because reviewers tend to include relevant keywords in their reviews. Um, and the Amazon search algorithm prioritizes uh, listings with more reviews and relevant keywords, whether they be positive or negative. Um, so it is it is a really important thing to be getting reviews and be getting uh, positive reviews. Obviously on eBay, it's much the same. Your eBay seller rating is up there uh, for everyone to see and it can drastically impact on your conversion rates and um, also on your ranking within uh, the eBay search um, engine. Um, another reason why getting awesome seller reviews is important is, is that on Amazon specifically, um, it can help you to win the Amazon um, buy box, which I'm going to talk about uh, now, in fact. So the buy box is something that we, we get asked a lot about. Um, on Amazon, one of the biggest differences between Amazon and other marketplaces um, is that unlike eBay, where every product has got individual listings, on Amazon, um, a product that has got multiple uh, sellers will only have one listing um, and one buy button. So what that ultimately means that if you you don't own that buy button um, on Amazon, so on this picture here, if you don't own the add to cart button on the right there, um, then your chance of converting uh, sales is significantly lower. So winning the buy box um, is critically um, important um, for sellers um, because it's only occupied by one seller at any point in time. So if there's five sellers for a single product, so there's five sellers uh, that sell the exact same product, only one seller will be assigned to the buy box. And 82% of all sales on Amazon come through the buy box. So the other 18% are clicking on that other sellers on Amazon below there, um, but more than likely they're clicking on the add to cart button in the buy box. Uh, so how do you win um, the Amazon buy box? Um, well, the algorithm is obviously not public knowledge given that it's so important, but there are a couple of um, tips um, that are relevant um, and pretty much everything that we've been speaking about today is relevant but number one um, I guess have competitive pricing so if you're selling the same product as everyone else make sure that your pricing is competitive it doesn't necessarily have to be the cheapest price that wins the buy box though um, optimize your listing so the more customers that find you the more sales or sales you'll get and the more chance you get a, a great 
more chance you have of getting great seller ratings, but also buying, uh, building rather a, a selling history. Um, so the more you sell your product, the more important Amazon believe you to be as a seller of that product and uh, therefore you, you have a much greater chance of winning the buy box. So this is why it's really important that you take advantage of getting on Amazon early, get that seller history for a particular SKU um, because in the long run it'll help you win the buy box. Um, if you are selling on Amazon, if you're a new seller and you've got particular products you want to, to feature and get selling history up on, I would highly recommend using Amazon's advertising feature to advertise your, your products uh, beyond you know, just them appearing in, in product uh, listings on Amazon. Um, so yeah, your seller history is really, really important. And not just on Amazon, um, it's also really important on eBay in terms of your search um, ratings. So keeping your seller rating obviously is important. So delivering great customer service, that also determines your position in the buy box. Um, and then you know, really delivering on your deal. So making sure that you get products out the door really, really quickly, that you provide tracking numbers back to Amazon as soon as you do that so that they can notify their customers uh, that you have shipped the product. Um, and if you can, take advantage of Amazon fulfillment services. So by using FBA, you have a far greater chance of um, winning the buy box. So if a product is fulfilled by Amazon, if the price is right, if the seller rating is great, the chances are you will win the buy box a position over someone that is fulfilling the goods themselves, who has a poor seller rating and has maybe not got um, or even has the same competitive uh, pricing. So that fulfillment piece is also incredibly important. Um, so the buy box position does um, differ from customer to customer as well. So if I'm a customer buying in, in New South Wales, there might be a different seller occupying the buy box um, than someone who's maybe shopping in Queensland because uh, that particular product is maybe located um, closer to the Queensland buyer than the New South Wales buyer in that particular instance. So product location does also come in, into um, play as well. Okay, so what is, I guess, um, the the secret sauce to omni-channel retail success? Um, well, our, our um, belief is that it really does come down to a unified commerce uh, platform. So a platform that enables you to sell everywhere and manage all of your back office uh, from a single integrated solution. That ultimately enables you to deliver the best possible customer experience. And we believe that there's four key pillars to a unified commerce solution. And the first is a centralized inventory management um, and stock control. Um, so when you run out of stock on one marketplace or in your online store or in your bricks and mortar store, that it does adjust stock across all of your sales channels. Um, that you have centralized order management returns and refunds. So when you make a sale through any of your sales channels, whether it be your online store through a marketplace or your bricks and mortar store, that that order flows into a central order management solution so that returns, refunds, and customer service um, is just so much easier. And the cost to fulfill orders, again, is so much lower. Um, that you have a platform that gives you a single customer view. So when someone buys on eBay or if they buy in your bricks and mortar store or your online store and they log into their online account, they can see all the sales from your various sales channels. And more importantly, for you as a business, you have visibility um, of your customer across all of these um, sales channels, giving you a 360 degree view of that customer, allowing you to deliver a much better customer experience. And finally, wrapping that in a layer of real-time analytics and reporting so that you can respond in real time to customer uh, needs. Um, these are the things that we at Nido um, are focused on uh, delivering as a platform in a single unified uh, solution. So a bit more about um, Nido and what we do. So like I said, with Nido uh, being a unified commerce solution, you can sell everywhere from a single integrated solution. So you can sell on, online with Nido e-commerce, you can sell in store with Nido point of sale, you can sell on marketplaces like Amazon, uh, eBay, and we're soon to release our catch integration with our channels uh, module. Um, you can sell an app with, our, with a mobile website or with our mobile native app. And if you're a wholesaler uh, or a business uh, to business um, operator, uh, we also have functionality specifically uh, for that. 
But what really makes us different is the fact that you can manage your back office operations from one central solution. So your purchasing, uh, your inventory management, your stock take, your stock adjustments, your orders for the different sales channels, your customers, uh, your payments, um, your shipping, labeling and logistics, all from a single integrated solution that allows you to deliver um, that seamless customer uh, experience. Okay, so I mentioned at the start of this webinar that um, we would be providing a bit of an offer um, to everyone. So I'll just click through to that now. So this is the offer. Um, you should be able to see it all there. We'll also be emailing uh, this to you after the webinar. Um, and so the offer is get on eBay uh, or Amazon for free um, with Nito. So your first three months um, of selling on Amazon uh, and eBay with our Nito Connect module will be free. So that's around $150 of, of value. And, and then in addition to that, um, through Nito, we are offering a six month free eBay featured store worth around $345 um, from eBay. So through our relationship with eBay, um, we'll be offering free eBay featured store. So with an eBay featured store, uh, you can brand the store uh, to match the branding of your bricks and mortar presence or of your own uh, online um, store and list all your products through the featured stores for people to purchase. And having a featured store also reduces your seller listing and final uh, value uh, fees. So there is a link um, to this offer that has been posted um, in the chat channel there if you're interested um, in it. Okay, so that's all we were gonna go through as part of the webinar today, but I guess I'm available here now to answer any questions that you might actually have. Um, so someone's just asking there, could you provide some more information on the wholesale or B2B option? So we're seeing this real trend um, towards wholesalers or traditionally business to business operations um, creating retail operations and selling through marketplaces either under a different brand which you can do with Nido so you can have a web store on one brand and your marketplace is under a different brand and um, that's a real trend that we're, we're seeing but in terms of specific wholesale functionality we do have a bunch of wholesale features built into our platform so for example most wholesalers don't want customers to be able to see uh, pricing without first logging in um, and then they want different customers or different customer groups to have different pricing dependent on maybe the volume of products that they're purchasing. So these are things that are supported by our platform. You can have a login to view pricing uh, feature. We also support price groups. So you can have different pricing for different uh, customer groups and then you can assign customers um, to different groups. You can also lock down content on your Nito web store to specific customer groups as well. So if there's specific content, whether it be a category of products or whether it be a, a content page, you can lock that down um, as well. We do support um, purchasing on account, which is important for wholesale businesses. So, you know, with terms, so buy now and pay in 30 days or or buy now and, and, and pay in seven days. Um, and account statements um, to go with that as well, where the system will automatically remind customers to pay the outstanding account through your online portal. Uh, but a list of all wholesale related features is available on our website. Otherwise, always just pick up the phone and give our sales team a call and they can walk you through the specific functions for your business. Um, so if you're an existing Nino customer, a few people are asking, can we get the eBay featured store deal? You can, yes. Um, so if you don't currently have an eBay account uh, with eBay, um, then this is applicable for all new to eBay merchants. So if you're new to eBay and you're a Nino customer, you will have access um, to that uh, feature um, and that offer. There are other benefits of being a Nito merchant with eBay, um, things like being able to have your seller limits uh, reduced or removed um, when you start on eBay. So typically eBay enforce a number of limits on new sellers to protect their marketplace. As a Nito merchant, we can help get those seller limits reduced uh, or removed for you. Just speak to our support team. There's a couple of 
questions here that are specific um, to you and your business. So uh, those that are specific rather than me answer them in a public forum, I'll, I'll get an email sent out to you after the webinar. So a question here, you mentioned SEO being important for your product pages. How about your homepage? Um, so yes, obviously your homepage is one of the most important pages on your own website, not as relevant to a marketplace, uh, but on your own website, very important. Um, and so yes, it's really important to identify the keywords that best describe your business and are gonna drive traffic to your business and ensuring, them, uh, ensuring that those keywords are um, entwined in your home page description that they are leveraged in your uh, home page meta title um, and description um, and that you're pointing you know relevant traffic related to those keywords uh, to your home page as well so really important obviously for your own website not just uh, for your product listings or for your home page rather um, in terms of how long that offer lasts so we've locked in that offer for the next um, month or so with eBay um, so I believe it it runs until um, the end of, of September at this um, stage. Any other questions that I can answer related to marketplaces specifically? So eBay, Amazon or, or Catch of the Day, I don't see any other questions in there at the moment in the question console. Probably really important to note that we'll be releasing over the next couple of weeks our latest Amazon integration. It's something we've been working uh, on since December last year. So um, around you know, nine months of development has gone into this uh, new Amazon Australia integration. This new integration will allow you to create new products um, on Amazon. So currently how our Amazon integration works is you can link your Neato inventory or your products to Amazon, uh, but you have to create them on Amazon in the first place um, and you have to get them registered officially with Amazon on the Amazon marketplace. We've been working closely with Amazon to create a tool that allows you to do all of that from within Neato, negating the need uh, for you to log into Amazon at all. So you'll be able to simply tick a box in Neato and have need to create the product on Amazon. When a sale happens on Amazon, that sale will then flow back into a Neato control panel for fulfillment, much like our eBay integration works today. The same level of integration will then be launched with the catch of the day marketplace um, next, um, which is currently in the works as well. So our Amazon full-blown integration is, is currently in final testing and will be released very soon. And we, we understand there's a, a big pent up demand for that. So we're excited to be able to release that. Uh, the Catch the Day uh, marketplace integration is being worked uh, on at the moment. We don't like to give exact deadlines because depending on testing, they can blow out, but we expect within the next one to two months for the Catch integration uh, to be released. So that'll include uh, product listing on Catch of the Day, as well as order management and inventory uh, syncing. Good question. Can the main image on your website be different to the image that you use on a marketplace? And the answer is yes. Um, so you can map whichever image you want to use as the main image on a marketplace uh, to your Neato backend. Um, that is the case for all of the marketplaces that we, we integrate with. In regards to inventory syncing, uh, is it automated? Yes. Um, so when you sell a product on eBay, for example, if you're selling on eBay, Catch, um, Amazon, and you have your own web store with Neato, um, when you sell a product on one of those marketplaces, um, it will deprecate your stock across all the other marketplaces as soon as that order gets created in Neato. So it will automatically sync your stock uh, for you. Um, you can also put stock buffers in place um, so that you don't oversell if you're concerned about overselling. So if two people buy you know, near the same time on, on two different marketplaces, by having a buffer in place, you can negate that negative um, customer experience. Um, with shipping, uh, yes, we do support integrated shipping with these marketplaces. So when uh, you make a sale on Amazon or eBay or through your web store, that sale will come into the back end of Neato. 
um, and then you can print your shipping label for one of our supported carriers. So we support Australia Post, TNT, um, Fastway, Couriers, Please, Toll, Sendal, you know, over 15 carriers um, with Nido. You can then print uh, your shipping labels in Nido. It'll manifest it with the carrier and it'll send the tracking number back to the marketplace to notify them that you've shipped the product. There's no need to use third party shipping software when using the Nido platform. Um, just a question about other shopping carts. Um, so yeah, we actually do support um, or are, are soon going to be releasing support for a number of other shopping cart solutions that exist out there. So if you're already using another shopping cart and you don't want to get rid of your existing website, um, so for example, you might be using, say, Shopify, um, which is a simple solution for small online stores, you could keep that website front end um, and you can integrate it into Nito and Nito can do all of your back end order management, inventory, shipping and marketplace management. So we'll be releasing our full blown integration for other shopping carts over the next uh, month or so. You can speak to our sales team about that if you're interested for more detail um, and that allow you to keep your front end web shop that you've maybe invested in over time um, without having to switch that to Nido's front end web store. So it's completely up to you whether you use Nido's front end web store or whether you continue to use your own cart. We're, we're, we're fully flexible in that regard um, and believe that being agnostic to the sales channel is what's important. So someone's asking the question, you know, is um, there an optimal amount of products to list to Amazon or eBay? And it's a really good question. Um, and there's a bit of consumer psychology involved in this. Um, what we find most of our retailers do is they only list a small percentage of their inventory to those marketplaces, given the fact that our system can automatically maintain stock levels. Um, and this gives the perception that you may be running low on stock and create urgent for, urgency from a, a buyer's perspective. So for example, if you've got a thousand of a particular SKU in stock, you might want to only send uh, five up to a particular marketplace. That five will show as five available in the marketplace and it might create some more urgency uh, from a consumer side rather than if you had a thousand, say, showing a stock. On the flip, on the flip side of that, you might have someone that's wanting to buy a thousand of your product and won't be able to do so if you don't list your full inventory. So I think this is dependent on the types of products that you are selling, but we do see a lot of our, our retailers, especially those that sell high value items, only pass through a small quantity of what they actually have available to sell uh, to improve their sales conversion rates. Um, a good question around promotion pricing. So if I run a promotion on my web store, will that promotion price then be syndicated across all my sales channels? Um, the answer with Nido, the answer is yes. Um, so if you select um, to have whatever your available store prices be your price across all marketplaces, um, then when a product goes on promotion in your web store, that promotion price will flow through if you choose uh, to the marketplace um, of choice. You don't have to have that feature turned on though. You can choose to have marketplace specific uh, pricing and map uh, your price levels in Nito to your different marketplaces. Like I said earlier in this um, presentation though, it really isn't a good customer experience to find your product um, at different price points across the internet or even offline. So we wouldn't suggest doing this unless you're using a different brand on a particular marketplace, which is something you can do with our platform. So you might have one brand represented as your web store and then a different brand represented as uh, your marketplace store. Um, a question about would there be an optimal number of SKUs listed? So an SKU is a stock keeping unit, so it's an individual product um, for those that didn't know. Um, there isn't really an optimal number of SKUs. I would say list everything that you have, um, dependent obviously on the seller plan that you have with the various marketplaces. Typically, um, if you're on the right plan, it's not gonna cost you anything to list your products. Um, and so, um, I would say take advantage of that and list everything. You're spreading a much wider net for someone to find your inventory, especially on Amazon. 
um, where you pay a set fee um, per month uh, and unlimited listings. Uh, that can be different with eBay where you do have listing fees. Um, but I would say, um, you know, put everything on and then dependent on what sells, maybe refine from there. But ultimately, you're spreading a wider net, a much better chance of being found on the marketplace. And um, people do, you know, find one listing and then drill into your store to find the rest of them in terms of their customer journey. So the more, I guess, spokes you have in the wheel, the better chance someone is of finding you. Any other questions specifically that I can answer? Like I said, um, we will be sending out our marketplace um, report to all attendees after the webinar. So have a read of that. There's some really useful information in that report, not just about the marketplace that I mentioned today, but others as well. Um, if you haven't um, had a look at eBay or Amazon yet, I, I strongly suggest having a look. Like I said, um, you know, these two marketplaces um, specifically are delivering exceptional results uh, for our customers. And with Amazon, there's still a really good opportunity to gain a first mover advantage, um, given that it's so new in the Australian marketplace. And your seller history does have a very big impact on your seller ranking and your your um, your opportunity to win the uh, buy box on Amazon, which like I said, 82% of all Amazon purchases do go through the buy box. So it's an important thing to win. Just a reminder about Street Pricer as well. So Street Pricer is the dynamic repricing engine that I mentioned uh, before. It can automatically price your products dependent on um, your competitors. Um, really handy if you're selling products that um, are sold by a number of other merchants. Um, for your own brand products, obviously not that relevant. Um, just another question there around invoicing and customer invoicing um, and, you know, which invoice the customer gets and from who. Um, so it's dependent on the marketplace, um, really. So if you're selling through through eBay, for example, you our system will automatically send out an invoice to the customer with your branding, um, messaging, et cetera. Um, with the likes of Amazon um, and Catch the Day, uh, they'll receive an invoice from those marketplaces themselves. And the reason being that um, the consumer is actually paying Amazon uh, in those instances, so Amazon and Catch, whereas with eBay, the consumer is paying uh, you. So you define the payment options, they'll pay your PayPal account specifically, for example, they'll pay you by direct deposit specifically and you'll invoice the customer. Whereas with eBay, uh, sorry, with Amazon and Catch, uh, those entities are the ones invoicing the customer and therefore they'll receive an invoice from those entities. Um, and so they will be branded Amazon or they'll be branded Catch. It's really important, again, to note that with Amazon, Amazon owns the customer. It's another big difference between eBay and Amazon. Amazon own the customer. You cannot um, email that customer directly. You cannot message that customer directly and you cannot send messaging, whether it be you know a flyer or otherwise in the package with the goods. Um, you must message the customer through Amazon's messaging center. Um, so they're very strict about that and they don't actually provide you with the customer's email address, they provide you with an encoded email address that uh, routes the email back to the customer. So don't try trick them because they've got lots of smarts around that and will promptly uh, ban your account. Um, just a question there around sharing this presentation with attendees. Um, yeah, sure, we, we will uh, do that after the webinar as well. Just give us a few hours to do so. Okay, so no more questions coming through, but obviously if you have any questions, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Um, we're always here to help and answer any questions that you might have about adding a new sales channel to your Nido store. Just a reminder that in a couple of weeks time, we will be launching our full-blown Amazon integration. We already have an integration, uh, but this is our new 
fully featured integration that I'm talking to you about. So it's important to get on board now and get ready, uh, get your products listed in Neato so that you can sync them across to Amazon when that's good to go. Catch the Day will also be coming out very soon too. So, so um, another great opportunity to grow revenue for your business. So thanks very much um, for joining me uh, today. Hopefully you learned something. Um, and like I said, we'll be sharing all this material with you afterwards. So um, if you've missed any of it, um, you can always read up on it later. So again, thanks very much. Have a great day and um, good luck uh, moving into the Christmas selling season, not too long away, believe it or not, which is scary. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Cheers.